In that case, we can move forward. Last session, we learned about byte pair encoding, and we said byte pair encoding is really important. It's going to allow you to work with open vocabulary, new words, out of dictionary words. And then we saw, or we at least uh, compared it to two other similar methods. One of them was byte level byte pair encoding, which is you're going to rather than using characters extracted from your corpus, which byte pair encoding uses, you're going to use Unicode characters and your byte is now going to be Unicode. And the other extension was word piece model, which is going to use a different strategy to merge uh, softwares together. Many modern language models, like uh, the most recent ones, Roberta, I guess, like Electra, like, uh, like T5, they're going to be using sentence piece to do the tokenization. What is that? There is going to be very little math in this slide, but it's actually really practical. You can download the package or install it on your computer, and then uh, you're going to be using the following commands. The first one is SPM, which is going to stand for sentence piece model, underscore train, you're going to tell to it, what is your training corpus? You're going to put a very large uh, text file. This could be basically all of the sentences in every single document on a Wikipedia corpus. So you're, ju you're just going to put everything in a very large file, or the algorithm can actually take multiple files as well. You can just put a list here, comma, another file, comma, another file. And the way that this text is formatted is going to be one sentence per line. So that's all pre-processing you need to do. So one sentence per line. And you're going to give it your input corpus. After the training process is done over your input text, you're going to end up with a model. This is a name that you choose. You can call it whatever that you like. Let's call it SPM. And then you can say how many word pieces you want to end up with. This could be 1,000, or this could be 32K, or a hyperparameter that you choose. This is your vocabulary size. And then you let the algorithm do its job. And then I'm going to tell you what it is actually doing. It's going to do the training. And once the training is done, you can say, OK, I'm going to write a text like, hello world. And I'm going to pipe it into SPM encode. And then we are going to use the model that we just trained. And then it's going to output the word pieces. This is what we understand. Actually, this is what we understand. This is what the algorithm is going to spit out. But in the end of the day, any sentence that you want to work with, it needs to be translated into a sequence of integers. That's what the computer likes. And the way that you're going to do it is you're going to say output format should be in the form of IDs. And these are the IDs of these word pieces in the dictionary. And that's going to give you a bunch of IDs. If you want to go the reverse route, you're going to use SPM decode. You're going to still use the same model. You have two options. One of them is giving it this sequence of word pieces that we just generated, and then it's going to decode it correctly into something that a human can read and understand. The other option is you have a sequence of integers, and then you can decode it into something that a human can understand. And the field of natural language processing is all about a human interacting with a computer, speaking with a computer. And therefore, this tokenization process is really important. A human can understand and read this sentence. A computer can understand this sequence of integers. And then you are translating back and forth. That's the idea of tokenization and detokenization. De Why is it important? Uh, let's keep this table aside for a while. I'm going to come back to it. What is the sentence piece algorithm doing? There is going to be four major components. First of all, there is going to be a text on the internet, and we know that internet is nasty. People are going to end up with new words. People are going to end up with new characters. For instance, they're going to say, see you at two to make an appointment, but then they are going to write it uh, C with a letter C, at with this at uh, symbol, which could be shift two on your keyboard, and then add two. So they're going to come up with nasty symbols, or they're going to write something with smiley faces. The idea of normalizer is to turn everything 
into a unique representation or a normalized representation, maybe multiple characters. You can just map them into the same Unicode character. And there is actually a field of its own, how to normalize. And there are multiple standards for doing it. There is going to be the training, which is exactly this process. Look at an entire corpus of text and then train your tokenizer and detokenizer. There is going to be encoding, which is translate from human readable sentences to computer readable integers, and then backward. For normalizer, it's a module to normalize semantically equivalent Unicode characters into a standard form, into a canonical form. And by default, the sentence piece algorithm, it's going to give you multiple options to do that. You're going to be using Unicode NFKC normalization. So if you want to learn more about it, just Google Unicode NFKC and watch a bunch of YouTube videos on it or uh, read a bunch of blog posts. But the idea is to turn a sentence on the internet, which could be really nasty, it, into something that is normalized. For the training process, you have multiple options to create your subword segmentations. One of them is byte pair encoding, which we covered last session. There is another alternative, Unigram language model, that we are going to cover today in the next slide. So you have two options to do the training process. There is one cool feature of the sentence piece model is that you can actually work directly with raw sentences. And that is exactly what is happening here. You're just giving it raw sentences. And what do I mean? If you remember when we were doing byte pair encoding, we created a dictionary. And then in that dictionary, we created the histogram of the number of times that the word is appearing in our corpus. And then using that, we have started merging characters later on. Here, there is no need to do that pre-tokenization anymore. So that's one advantage. And I'm going to tell you how you can actually handle that. And if you end up using the byte pair encoding option for sentence piece, it has a smart implementation of it. If you naively implement byte pair encoding, it's going to take you order of n mm -hmm. squared in terms of computational cost. If you do it smartly, it's going to reduce the cost to order of n log n. And then the idea is that you're going to use some uh, data structures suitable for this task, like binary heap. There is also this idea of the tokenization being lossless. What do I mean? If you start with the text on the internet, you normalize it, you encode it, and then you decode the resulting encoded sentence, it should give you the same normalized text. Many of the tokenization process, processes before this work, they are not actually doing that. It's not lossless. And then uh, I mentioned that WordPiece is able to work directly with raw sentences. Not only that, many of the languages in the world, they are not going to separate their words using spaces. For instance, something like Japanese or Chinese, uh, they don't do that. So the words are not separated by spaces or white space. And sentence piece is going to be able to work not only for English, it's going to work for Chinese, it's going to work for Japanese or any other language that is available. And how, how is it possible? First of all, we need to get rid of this uh, pre-tokenization step, basically separating the words using spaces. Let's get rid of that. And how do you get rid of it? Any white space that you encounter in an English sentence or any other language that uses spaces, you are going to replace that with a meta symbol. It's a fancy symbol. It's actually not underscore. It's just a symbol that looks like underscore. And that's the Unicode code for it. So first of all, you go through your corpus and replace every space with this special underscore character. Now, even English is, is just a bunch of characters that are concatenated together. And then you can do your tokenization on that using sentence piece. And then the tokenized uh, version of this raw text is going to end up being a list. This is a way of representing a list of subwords. Okay? And the whole point, the entire point was the 
tokenization process being lossless, all we are doing with sentence piece and this training step is a tokenizer part. The detokenizer part is doesn't need any training. It's just a deterministic operation. You're going to start with an empty string. Your tokens is a list of tokens. You are going to call the join function in Python. And then you're going to replace all of these meta symbols with a space. And this is how the detokenization process is working. Okay, perfect. Now it's time to look at this table here. You can start with word models, which is basically have a dictionary of all the words that are showing up. And then you are translating from Japanese to English, from English to Japanese. If you are using a word model, you're going to need to have a very large vocabulary, ADK, for both of them. And then that's going to give you a blue score. You can use sentence piece, and sentence piece is just for both of them. You're just going to, in this input text that you're putting, you're just going to put both English and your Japanese texts in a single document or a list of two documents. And then you're just going to train sentence piece jointly on those two. That's going to give you a shared vocabulary of 8K. And that's this hyperparameter that you choose here. It's much smaller. And that's going to give you better results in terms of translation. You can use sentence piece with retokenization step, like what we were doing with byte pair encoding. Don't use raw text. Maybe do some pre-tokenization. That's going to give you slightly better results, but maybe it's not worth the effort. And this is the interesting part. If you use a word model for Japanese, sentence piece for English, there is going to be a drop in the performance of your translations. The other way around, using sentence piece for Japanese, word for English, is not affected by that. It means that sentence piece is actually very useful for languages such as Japanese. Unlike word models being a good model, relatively good model for English. You see the same pattern when you go from English to Japanese. If you use sentence piece for Japanese, word for English, the performance is good. If you do it the other way around, the performance is going to drop. And that's exactly what you see here. So sentence piece, you can use it for, it's a more universal way of tokenization and detokenization. So I'm going to leave this as an exercise. Uh, download or clone the GitHub repository for sentence piece install it, and then do some training on a corpus to give you the tokenizer and the deep tokenizer. Any questions about this? I know a lot of the math and a lot of the details in the math I didn't cover. I'm going to cover this Unigram language model next, but some of these don't have anything to do with deep learning anyways. Like how do you use binary heaps to reduce the cost of the training? Any questions about this? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect. So this is actually what you're going to be using for tokenization when it comes to deep learning these days.